So for those of you that are new to the channel, I don't live here. I don't live in Alabama, but my family farm is here. And I found a guy who lives down the road. He helped me plant the trees. And he and his family, they're like, they're loaning me this car. And he helped coordinate this camper for me. Looks a little different than the RV I stayed in last November, but basically the same thing. Allows me to stay here. I have internet attached to it. I've got fiber optic cable. Right now I'm getting about 550 megabytes up and down, which is pretty amazing. That's what fiber does for you. And Brady went and got this Polaris Ranger for me. So yeah, it's used, it's a good piece of equipment and allows me to get in and on the farm. The farm is muddy. Um, and so I don't wanna take the Lincoln on the farm, <laughs> ruin their car. And this, everybody, is Brady Lucas. He's the one that's been helping me out with everything. So uh, he just picked me up from the airport and we literally just got here. But I wanna show you something I just got that's like a big, big deal. And it's a bush hog by Dr. Power and we're about to put it together. I'm gonna videotape putting it together and I'll tell you how hard it is. I hope it's not as bad as that stupid wheelbarrow. So here it is. This is how it was delivered in this crate. And it has been rained on. It's gonna be in the Connex container though, but that's why this is a little dark. And because it just rained today for the first time in a long time. But this is how it comes all crated up. I'm gonna put it together, so let's get to it. I guess we just knock it off, right? That's why I'll start at the bottom. Oh, you about knock the bottom sides all the way off of it? Pull yeah. it straight up. So what kind of a brush mower is this? This is a Dr. Power field and brush mower. It has a 10.5 horsepower manual start Briggs & Stratton engine with a 26 inch cutting width and a 26 inch deck that's enclosed on three sides, leaving the deck open in the front. The mower has three forward speeds and a reverse speed. It also comes with a 90 day commercial and two year residential warranty on the machine and a two year residential and one year commercial warranty on the Briggs & Stratton engine. Got the lid. I've got some bolts, some mesh instructions. Bolts are to put this on. Assembly is pretty easy. Remove the deflector, install the spark arrestor. If you don't want to do it, you ain't got to do it. Okay. It's just some California stuff. <laughs> California stuff. All right. All that really needs to be done is that you take it out of the box and you connect the handlebars. And the mower comes with four bolts to do this. And you have a choice of two angles to mount the handlebars in. One's a higher, more straight up and down angle. And the other is a little more angle. It's slanted, so it's easier to lift the front of the mower over taller brush. And that's the one I chose because the weeds I'm cutting are pretty tall. Some of them are about five feet tall. When we started unpacking this thing, we actually discovered a few issues during the initial setup of the machine. You're showing it goes in there. Oh. I don't understand where it goes at though. One issue was that the mower came with a protective cover for the machine and a bolt to attach it, but there's nowhere to attach the bolt to connect the cover. So we've got this lid. And this bolt, picture shows it goes in here, but there's no place to hook this up on here. Like there's no hole to put it in, so we're trying to figure that out. It's missing something. It's missing a couple things, honestly. Yeah, like what goes in these holes? I think something's missing. Missing hmm. some part of the package. That's not good. I called Dr. Power and they said they must have forgotten to attach the plate that was needed to attach the cover to the mower and that they'd send me a replacement ASAP. After we got it all set up, it was time to crank it up and take it for a spin. The far starting engine at oil. So I did that. Okay. So it's good there. Right, you don't want to choke it now? How do you choke it? All the way up here. Okay. Keep it in neutral. Blade engagement. Just traction drive. Should it come up here now? Pull it. Pull it. 
Oh, look underneath, see if the blade's cool. Did you cut anything under there? No, it's got that little paper on there. That's it. What's the? I'm just reading this. Throttle to choke. Okay. Full recoil on engine. Move okay. throttle to bunny rabbit. All right. You good? The reason it takes a few pulls in the beginning is because the gas has to make it through the whole engine before it can actually crank. But after a few pulls, it was off and running. Honestly, all seems pretty good. It sounded great, seemed to be running really well. The gears were engaging to move it forwards and backwards. Okay, look at this. Here's what it looks like underneath the mower when the blade's engaged. Pretty cool, huh? Here's the second issue we found. We can get it to start, but we can't get it to cut off. Let's, let's demonstrate this. Okay. Frank's great. Frank's great. But then, when we come here to stop, and Brady showed me how to cut it off by choking out the engine. There's a little, careful, there's a little flap thing. A little flap thing that moves up and pushes that. Mm-hmm. Oh, there it goes, it just moved. I see it. the only way to shut this thing off. See, that's probably choke right there. There are some issues with it, which I'm a little frustrated about. I can start it, it runs great. I'm gonna be able to use it. I'm going right now to go use it, but you can't shut it off. And so you have to force choke it out. It's so stinking annoying. Um, but I am excited to go use it. I'm gonna go use it right now. All right, we got it in the back of the Polaris. And we're gonna take it to the farm right now. This is what the property looks like. Oh my God. It's not as bad as you ever seen, though, has it? Nope. It's way better than it was after last summer. One day later. If you look here, you'll see all these dying weeds. Okay. So here they are. They're pretty big. You see where I started running the Dr. Brush mower? show you this. I'm going to send the drone up as well. So I've, I've mowed all this already. And that's when I was like, you know what? I better stop this and I better show people exactly what I'm doing. But so these weeds are big and you can see them get back in here and look at this. Okay. So I'm going to turn around so you can see just how big these weeds are. Look, it's behind me. It's like taller than me. So we're gonna get the doctor 
Power. I don't. I hate calling it a Dr. Power. Um, I'm just gonna call it the doctor. <laughs> Normally, you don't want the doctor to be doing a lot of cutting, but in this case, it's just what the doctor's ordering. <laughs> Here's the thing, I've got, uh, I was doing some mowing, I had to, I wanted to go ahead and get some stuff done, but this, this is like a, um, a wheel pulley system that turns the, the blade and they have a cover that comes over the top of this that protects it so you can't stick your hands in there and brush and stuff can't get in there. I'm gonna have to clean this out after I'm done. Right now, while I'm using this, this is gonna be exposed, but I don't know what else to do. I gotta get the stuff done. The one thing that I found that's kind of difficult with this thing is that um, right here on this back handle, it's got like a safety release. You hold down the safety and then you pull this and it engages the blade and then the blade gets moving. Um, if you're doing this, it's hard to hold that and to continually hold that, like your arm starts really screwing with your arm. So, handy dandy fix it. This is what I'm using. It's just a zip tie. I did it to the right length, and I basically just lift this baby up like that, and loop it over, and I'm done, and then I'm not aching my arm. So that's a quick fix for that. Um, and then the tractor drive, I actually do hold that because this thing's got a lot of power, and if it's, if it's held down, and it stayed down, it like will not stop. It'll keep rolling and you could really get hurt badly. Um, if, you know, when you let go of that, it, it, it stops the wheels, the wheels stop moving. So if you didn't do that, I would not recommend ever doing that because I think you could get hurt. By the way, so I've got oil here, I've got gas here, and then right over here, uh, if you're like changing the oil, you wanna replace it with new oil. It's got a cap here and you can just pour the oil straight out of the engine. So that's pretty cool. What else can I tell you about it? Um, I love this thing. This allows me to get as close to the trees as possible and get as ri rid of as many weeds around the trees as I possibly could as fast as I could. And that's why I got this. And so this deck right here is really awesome. Um, I guess the blade's off of the deck about an inch. Uh, this is supposed to be a 26 inch, but it lets me get nice and close to the trees. All right, so I'm gonna get some gas in this. I'm gonna check the oil. I pointed to this. The gas does not go in this. The oil goes in this. That's it, baby. Right on target. Believe it or not. All right, time for gas. Oh, by the way, um, one thing you want when you got a farm is you want a good pair of gloves. And uh, by the way, this, these guys, the doctor, Dr. Power, they're not sponsoring me. Uh, the glove company, they're not sponsoring me. So I'm just doing this, it's like, nobody's paying me to do this. But I've been looking for a good pair of gloves and um, I had this exact same brand, but it was like a synthetic material, which is kind of like this here. Um, and they were really great. I loved using them, but these have leather. I love these. I love them. And I used them all yesterday for the first time. These are ranch work gloves by Ironclad. If you want a good pair of gloves, I do recommend these. They're really inexpensive. They're like 25 bucks. Um, look at that. The, plastic here is cut so you can you know open and close your digits without any issues um, anyway just wanted to mention that let's get some gas in here so you need ethanol free gas for this and I love this spout you know you buy these things now and they all have safety features so that kids won't be drinking gas guess um, but it's so hard to get the gas out 
because it got a stupid safety feature on it. And you can't buy the gas tanks anymore without the stupid safety feature. Why don't they just provide you some sort of like a, a safety locking mechanism that you put on it when you're not using it, that kids can't get into, rather than giving you something that you have to jerry-rig and pull like three different levers to even get it in the hole. It drives me bananas. Um, oh, sounds like that's locked. Look, it clicked. That's a nice little feature. Just got to put the clutch on, I mean the uh, choke on. So that's that. And let's see if this thing cranks up. We already had it cranked up yesterday. And let's see how well it does. The second day. Ooh, oh, 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 almost. Step back here a little bit so you don't hear all the engine. Uh, I'm going to pull the handle so you can hear that thing spinning around underneath there. See if I can even show you. Take it out of neutral first. That's simple. So I've got it on turtle now. <laughs> Dropped it down so it's not using up as much gas. And um, let's see if it'll cut off. See, I push it all the way to the left, it's on the stop, and it's not stopping. So I have to like flood the engine so that it'll stop. Dang, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, I look like I know what I'm doing, don't I? <laughs> so I basically pushed in that uh, choke I think it's the choke, and um, it was on the turtle, and then I pulled it up and gave it a little bit of gas and then dropped it back down in it. I guess they say it floods the engine and shuts it off. Here's the reason I got the brush mower. Most of the time when we cut the weeds, we start with the bush hog that's on the back of the tractor, and we get as close to the trees as we possibly can, and then after I've done that, I come back with the weed eater, and then I sort of finish everything off. But the problem is, if you get really close to the tree, you could hit a bump or something, that bush hog could move right or left and destroy the tree, and I don't want that to happen. So I wanted a quick way to bush hog right up next to the trees and kill all the weeds without having to risk injuring my trees. Will I have to come back with the uh, weed eater to kind of clean up around the tree afterwards? Yeah, but for the most part, I'm not gonna have to do as much cleanup as I normally would. So it's a big time saver for me. And that's what I'm gonna use the brush mower for most of the time, is getting right up next to my trees down the rows of the trees. So, I don't know, I've done about five rows, maybe, maybe four rows um, with this thing. And so, what do I think about the machine? I love this machine. Aside from the fact that it's missing the piece, they didn't send it to me for whatever, to put uh, the thing that protects this area. Like, see all this? I got all this buildup in here, so I'm gonna have to clean this out. And if I had the protector there, that wouldn't be happening. 
So see all this stuff? It gets caught up when it's being mulched. It wouldn't do it as much if I had the cover and it's a safety feature. Also, I'm gonna have to ask them, but there's this wire here. And it's a manual start. I'm not really sure what that's for unless it's for an attachment maybe. So I'd like to figure that out. As far as the way this thing works, it kicks ass. It really cuts some grass. Ooh, that's good. Kicks ass and cuts some grass. And I'm talking about the donkey when I say ass. <laughs> the other thing I learned that I, you know, might be handy is we actually have five different settings. You've got reverse, neutral, and then gear one, two, and three. The speed of reverse is probably in between one and two. The speed one, it's pretty slow. So you can move and, you know, move this at the same time and allows me to get right up next to the trees. So what I'm doing is on the initial pass, I was going uh, just in speed one. And then when I got up the tree, I cut really close to one side. And then I go ahead and do around the tree. I think in the grand scheme, it's just quicker for me to do it then and there in uh, gear one. And on the way back, I get the other side, uh, but I do that in speed two, just cause it's really fast. Honestly, gear three is pretty fast. It's like a, a nice little, like that's, that's how fast gear three is. And you don't really want to do it. I mean, you can, but you can't control the machine cause it's so heavy. Um, it's a little, you know, you don't want to do it next to any crops or anything. Uh, but coming back, I had it in three and I had the mower going too, and I just let it run. So I might as well, you know, whatever I can cut on the way back. Now I'm just gonna fill it up with gas. Check my oil too. This farming, I don't know, I guess it's not tricky, but you have to be consistent and regular. That's very difficult for me. I love the spout that I bought. Not having to deal with the stupid child lock. I know I always talk about that, but I love it. Cool thing about this, put this on, spin it. Is it tight enough? You hear that click? It's tight enough. All right, you see this little grid here? That's where I'm aiming for. I want the line to be between there. I don't want it to really be too much over that. So that you get the right amount in there. Last thing you want is to pay a few thousand dollars for a machine and then start having a season because it doesn't have oil in it. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's right there. It's pretty good. I do plan on using the mower to cut heavy duty brush and to cut paths in the woods to get to areas that are really hard to get to. So as well as showing you how well it's done with the weeds, I also want to go after some tough stuff. So what just happened is um, it hit a piece of wood that was a little bit too big and it slowed the uh, slowed it down so much that it stalled it. Earlier when this happened, 
it was off of a branch that was this big. So that's about an inch. Um, you know, it just sort of depends. It doesn't have any problems with like this sort of stuff. Um, it doesn't like even this sort of a diameter does seem to have an issue or this, but Look, the diameter on these are not that big, um, but it's coming up against two trees. So, yeah, I think that's sort of the issue, is that you have multiples so that are that big and can't handle it. But it's doing great. Let me check on here. Make sure everything's okay. Everything seems fine. We're gonna crank it right back up, see how it does. This brush is pretty heavy, and as you can see, the machine's handling it pretty darn well. I'm pretty impressed. The specs say it can take out trees or saplings two inches in diameter. That's pretty thick. So, so far that claim seems to be true. And it does a great job, especially if you're not trying to do it quickly. If you don't rush the machine, I think you'll be surprised at just how well it performs. In summary, I think the Dr. Power brush mower was a fantastic investment. Aside from the little hiccups that we had with the missing plate and the fact that uh, it hasn't been tuned perfectly to shut off, I think it was a fantastic purchase and I would buy it again. It's a great machine. Here's where I will give you a little bit of advice. I don't think the bigger machines, at least for me, are worth it. I purchased the smallest mower with a 10.5 engine, and honestly, it's more than capable to take out whatever saplings and whatever brush I throw at it. And as you can see on the video, this is the sort of stuff I'm going after. It's not just grass, like it's heavy duty stuff. It's small saplings, it's big briars and brush and weeds, etc. I was considering the larger models, but aside from the cutting width, I'm not sure I'd benefit any more from the bigger models. So if you're not going after trees bigger than two inches, just stick with the smaller model. And honestly, if you're going after trees that are bigger than two inches, it might actually be quicker just to cut them down with a chainsaw and drag them out of there, or hire a mulcher. In my opinion, for me, it's not worth the extra money to go bigger. As you can see, the 10.5 horsepower model with the 26 inch wide deck is a very capable machine and does a killer job going after big time brush. It also mulches pretty well. Also, just so you know, I watched prices the whole year and it seems the best price I was able to get on this model was $1,943.99 after tax. The Briggs & Stratton motor is a well-known brand and I hope to have this mower for many, many more seasons to come. All you need to know is avoid gas with ethanol, keep oil in it, and keep it covered. Yeah, man, this is a fantastic purchase. If you have any advice for me, please put it in the comments. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching LA Editor Alabama King. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and maybe even leave a comment. All that really helps me out. And a big shout out to Signature Tracks at SignatureTracks.com for their awesome music and to Boris Sapphire for their industry leading visual effects. Check out the QR code or link for a discount on Sapphire for my subscribers. We'll see you on the next one.